In this fast-paced world, we always look for quick solutions to common repeated problems. For example, throwing the can in the trash bin instead of getting up and putting it in the trash because it's faster. Or copying code from Gemini or ChatGPT because that is also faster. Let's say I want to build a video call app quickly, so I start up a Flutter project and start building the app. I decide to build the user interface first and once that is done, I have to get started on the backend. I would applaud myself for selecting the most efficient method to build a video call app if this was 2010. However, this is not the way to go in 2024. The most efficient method to solving this problem is definitely a UI kit. UI kits are pre-built widgets that can help speed up the development process by a lot. They continue to get more and more popular and help save lots of time while building UI. Couple them with ready-to-use APIs and you become a time-saving monster. That's where Zivo Cloud comes in. It is a product suite that offers video call, voice chat, and app chat, and many more products. But what I am really interested in is their UI kit for video calling, which contains pre-built widgets and baked-in functionality to make video call apps. To get started, go ahead and register an account on zigocloud.com. This will give you access to 10,000 free minutes for audio and video calls. Once your account is created, you will be prompted by this pop-up. Just enter the details and click continue where you will be shown all the free benefits. Click on go to dashboard and now you can see a lot of stuff. Like the resources section where you can learn more about integrating more of their solutions or the bills overview section where you can see your remaining free minutes, your balance and your current plan. But don't worry since you didn't enter your card details you can't be charged. To create our first project, click on the create your first project button and then then select voice and video call. Then scroll down and hit next. After that, enter your project name, which will be runtime snippets for me, but you can choose whatever you want. Below this is an option to choose UI kits or SDKs. If you click on Flutter inside the UI kits option, you will see that it already has code to integrate the UI kit. Now click on start with UI kits and we will be taken to the framework selection screen where we are going to choose Flutter. After that, we will be navigated to UI configuration where we can configure different features. For example, selecting group call or one-on-one -on -one call, enabling or disabling call invitation, standard face beautification and other premium features like screen sharing and virtual avatar. The default selected settings work for me so I will scroll down and hit save and start to integrate and that will take me to the configuration page. It has a cool little guide to quickly get you started and also the app ID and app sign secrets that will activate the UI kit inside the app. Let's fire up the Flutter project and it's time to start coding. Remove everything below the My App widget, then hit STL and enter to create a stateless widget and call it Homepage. Return a scaffold with a centered text button with text that says Join Call and the on pressed method with the navigation logic to go to the Call page. After that, go to pubspec.yaml file and import the Zigo UI kit package. Go back to main.dart and create another stateless widget. Name it call page and then return a scaffold. Inside the scaffold call the Zigo UI kit pre-built call constructor and assign it your app ID, app sign, user ID, username, call ID and config. Copy the app ID and app sign secrets from your browser to your project and assign a user ID and username as you please. But keep in mind that this should ideally be configured from your backend. The call ID should be the same for both clients to join the call, so it is being passed from the widget above. Assign the config to be one-on-one -on -one video call factory constructor, which will load all the one-on-one -on -one video call settings. You can also change this to group video call by invoking the group video call constructor, but we're not going to do that. Let's run this for iOS. To do that, add the following permissions to info.plist. Make sure to change these strings to something meaningful otherwise App Store can reject your app. Now run the iOS app. The app runs on iOS, now let's configure it for Android. Go to android slash settings.cradle and inside plugins change the Kotlin version to a lower version. Now run Flutter Clean and then Flutter Pop Get to apply these changes. For production, also add the following permissions to Android Manifest. 
first. Now run the app and it should work for Android. We got both apps to work easily. Now let's change the user ID and username according to platform so we can make two different users join the same call. We will use the platform API to change these. First run for Android. Make sure it builds and the app runs. Then close the debug session. Run the iOS app now. Join the call on both the apps and you should be able to see the users joined in both apps. If you speak, you would also hear some feedback from both the devices. Now let's change some settings. For example, I want the user to be prompted with a dialogue whenever they want to leave the video call. We can do this by assigning the hangup confirm dialog info to Zico call hangup confirm dialog info. I want to display the username at the top so I can use the Zico call top menu bar config to do that. To make it persistent, set hide automatically and hide by click to false. Let's make the bottom menu bar to have a margin of 32 and set hide automatically and hide by click to false. I also prefer the layout to be like a gallery. Now run the app and you should be able to see the changes reflected. Congratulations, you've just built your video call app in minutes. If you want more UI customizations, you can look at the UI kit documentation. If you want to implement a custom UI, have a look at the SDK documentation. As always, the source code will be in the description. I hope you learned something new by watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.